Um, today we're going to be looking at a TED presentation. It's titled Inventing is the Easy Part. Um, it's by Daniel Schnitzer and we're going to be watching the talk, um, discussing it, looking at some vocabulary. You'll get an, uh, a chance to kind of express your opinion on the topic. So lots of listening and speaking practice today. Um, you can join class early, like Van has just joined class, if you have a reservation. So if you go to verbling.com slash get reservations, you can get reservations by liking the Facebook page, um, inviting your friends to come hang out with you on Verbling, and or you can become a premium member. So it's $25 a month, and it allows you to have unlimited reservations. So you can join class anytime. Hi, Van. Hello. Are you a premium member, or did you just use a reservation? Oh, Van, I think you're echoing. So just make sure you only have uh, the Hangout open. Oh, yeah, you have headphones. Um, for everyone else, as soon as the button's green, you can join and come hang out with us. And again, we'll be looking at a TED Talk today. So this is kind of both a listening and a speaking class. Um, how long is the video? I don't remember. I will check. Let me see. I'm just adding. It's about five minutes long, the video. Okay. So first thing we'll do is look at some vocabulary, and then we will um, look at some focus questions, watch the video, and then discuss it together. So come on in. The button's green. Just press join class, and you can come hang out with us. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Perkin had Hello. a sex change, I think, in the last two minutes. Hello. <laughs> it's like when we do a role play class and everyone turns into a woman. Very strange. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Wajid. Hi, Ma. Hi, Maria. Hello, hello. I think we're full. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Hello. Hi. And hi to everyone who's watching. You can participate through the chat um, if you don't have a seat, or you can kind of hang out, and the button will turn green if anyone leaves, and you can snag their seat. Um, yeah, you might want not want to talk with an Al Pacino voice, like, on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so, oh, where's that echo coming from? Oh. Okay. So, hi, everyone. Um, today we're going to be watching a video and talking about it, so both listening and speaking practice in this class. Um, okay. It's an advanced class, so if I'm speaking too quickly and you can't understand what I'm saying, this class might be too high in level for you, so you can take an intermediate or a beginner class. Um, and another time. Again, if I'm if you don't understand me, and I'm just you can just ask, and I'll explain what I'm saying. Um, so just to warm up, please tell me your name, where you're from, and how would you describe your carbon footprint? Does anyone know what that is? A carbon footprint. No. Have you heard this expression before? No. no. Yeah, I've heard it. <laughs> Okay, Maria, do you know what it means? Yes, it's the amount of carbon or f fossil fuel, burnt fossil fuel, <laughs> carbon, carbon emission that you Yes, there um, you go. Vocabulary cost. word from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. So it's the amount of fossil fuels that you use, basically, mm -hmm. um, in your daily life. So how the burning of fossil fuels and how much of it is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, how how many t lights do you leave on, and you know uh, things like that in your daily life? Uh, do you drive everywhere that you go and use a lot of gas? What is your carbon footprint like? Um, do you know, uh, 
Gino, if are you in class, Gino, or are you outside? You know, there you are. You're right there. Hello. <laughs> Do you understand me, or is it? Am I yes. speaking too quickly? Yes. Thanks. Uh, I I understand very very little. It's okay. You can still hang out. We'll be watching a video, and I he doesn't speak too quickly in the video, so you'll probably understand. I can uh, I can I can write uh, better than uh, here. Yeah, that's normal. That's normal. Um, it's the more you listen, the better, the easier it will be. But it's normal to be able to speak, type, to write and read more than speak. What is this? This calculator thing. Oh, oh, cool. So is that this is how you calculate your carbon footprint? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take a look at it. Free carbon footprint calculator. Mm. I'm a little afraid, to be honest, to actually uh, <laughs> to find Mom, out. I am the greenest. You're the greenest. Yes, because Are you now it's, yeah, it's about to be. Uh, normally, I don't use too much, even the light, because uh, I use a laptop. And I I set my laptop light to the lowest. Think? See, when I do that, this is what happens to my video. Doesn't my video get darker? Oh no, maybe that's only at night. No. Uh, I don't use a car. I travel on foot. <laughs> so you don't drive? Um, you yes. use candles instead of... <laughs> I don't use candles. I don't use even candles. <laughs> You walk inside and light your candle, and then you walk around the house. <laughs> my eyes see. Sometimes my mother and son say, hey, come light. I don't see you. They Maybe they are older than me. They don't, I, I see well, uh, even in dark. Sometimes uh, I, when I travel like one room to, to another room, I don't like open the... Okay, so you have, the... um, you have bat eyes. Do you know what... Does anyone know what this is? <laughs> or bat vision? <laughs> Yeah. You have like yeah. night vision where you just like walk around in the dark and you you know when you're like playing a video <laughs> game and they put on the night goggles and then everything's green. Yeah. Yeah. Have, like, Servet has like built-in night vision where he can just kind night, of night night vision. Yeah. <laughs> you can just navigate in the dark. It's pretty cool. Too. <laughs> so Servet, you think you have a very low carbon footprint? Yes, and I also don't open like heater. Okay, so I'm, you don't use the heater? You don't use heaters or anything? Yeah, because uh, our windows uh, has doesn't get cold wind, uh, so it stays hot. And I get used to live in another state, which is pretty like Canada, so the Istanbul's weather looks like summer all the time. Oh, okay, <laughs> so me. you don't really need the heat. Yeah. I have a heater on beside my feet right now, so <laughs> this is why I'm afraid to do the carbon footprint calculator. I don't think I'm very green. <laughs> Servet, do you use public transport? Yes. Okay, but that's better. For, it's yeah, better than, for, than driving. Yeah, for um, long distance. For short distance, I travel on foot. <laughs> okay. Um, Van. <laughs> hi, Van. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. This is the measurement, but I wonder what EQ means. Does Pardon? somebody uh, EQ? What is that? EQ. Um, carbon dioxide and then EQ per year. Per year, according to this calculator, I don't know what e mm. EQ means. I don't know. Let me see. Equivalent. I guess it stands for equivalent, but I don't know how that would... Okay. Yeah. Equivalent, to, maybe it means equivalent to that much carbon dioxide per year, what you use? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so, Maria, what is your carbon footprint like? Uh, <laughs> well, um, I guess it's sometimes it's very high, I mean, to f take a flight to fly somewhere or something makes a very big carbon footprint. Yeah. <laughs> and I did that recently. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> and but um, in daily life, no, I don't use car very often. Actually, I am member of a carpool, 
So mm -hmm. I drive only electric uh, electric cars. It it has a battery. Yeah. So I don't use fuel. Okay. Very often. So you actually do you actually have an electric car? Uh, I don't own one, but okay. I am like um, part of a carpool. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I rent this car whenever I need it. Does everyone know what carpooling is? No. Where you take turns driving, usually one person will drive and pick up like four people so that not everyone's driving at once, so it saves gas. Uh, yeah, oh. but in this case, I can rent this car by myself. So like, it's like a shared car kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. Exactly. Um, Birkin, what is your carbon footprint like? Actually, my carbon footprint is neither like... Oh, I think Birkin froze. Unless I froze. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. I can hear you. <laughs> froze. I never know when someone freezes. I'm like, oh no, is that me? Um, okay, Lucas? Yes? What's your carbon footprint like? Well, I guess that it is a low footprint because I don't have a car and I use public transportation. Mm -hmm. I like to walk as well. And, well, I think that the, the biggest use I, I do is uh, related with electricity. Mm -hmm. So, I guess this is my major contribution to my footprint, the use of electricity. Right. Um, me too. And unfortunately, I fly a lot. <laughs> 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 I like to travel, so I've taken quite a few flights and um, flying, yeah, that would add a pretty good chunk to your carbon footprint. So. Mm -hmm. I, that's, this is why I'm afraid of the calculator, guys, because I, I don't want to know. Um, so, Lucas, yours is pretty low. Maybe you're like Servat. You're nice and green, you'd say. And Maria, well, I think you're pretty green, too, with your carpool. Yeah, but I use a lot of heat. Like, in the winter, yeah. I turn up the heater very much. And But I have uh, changed all my light bulbs mm -hmm. to, like, LED oh, yeah. lamps. So, I don't... I don't um, uh, use much energy f for for lights. Or... Hey, look who's here! <laughs> My two friends, bro. <laughs> I forget your names, guys. Well, I don't know if Hello, you're. Hello, you remember us? I remember you, but I forget your names. <laughs> Peter, Peter, Peter and Paul. Peter, Peter and, Paul. and Paul. Okay, Peter and Paul. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi. Um, Are they twins? Oh no. Yeah, we're twins. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, cool. Enrique. Hi, Enrique. What? Hi, Samantha. How are you? Yeah, doing? we. Good. How are we you? Okay. We are okay. I am fine. Thank you for asking. Sorry, uh, guys. I'm just asking Enrique about his carbon footprint. Enrique, what is your carbon footprint like? Well, I use uh, public transportation, but the uh, every day, so it's not much. That's good. What about heat? And do you ever fly? Um, I buy my. My food outside, so not. Okay, cool. Um, sorry if I didn't ask you. I just don't want to stick on that question too long because we still have a video to watch. So um, I'm just going to go over um, some vocabulary that we're going to find in this video. So first word is um, Hisham. I'm just going to give you the link. If you go to verbling.com slash classes, you can select beginner and then it would be a little bit easier. Um, first vocabulary word is romanticizing. What does it mean to romanticize something, like an idea? I don't mean make it romantic and like kissing and stuff. <laughs> it means something different. Make it look more nice than it is? Or yeah. Or literary movement? Yes, yeah. Uh, it's a literary movement, mm -hmm. romanticism. Maybe, maybe like taking it so emotionally. Right, I think Maria is pretty much right on the nail actually with this one. It means like trying to make something look nicer than it maybe actually is. So mm. to romanticize the idea of winter is to, like winter in Canada is to say, oh it's so beautiful, the snow everywhere, like it looks so nice outside, you walk and it's nice crisp air and you're romanticizing winter in Canada when actually it's freezing cold and you have to shovel and it kind of sucks. <laughs> so 
That's like romanticizing that idea. So making it, it look it looks nice on pictures with all this. Yeah, stuff. it does, and it is nice, but it also <laughs> does kind of suck sometimes. Like shoveling your driveway every day, and or twice a day sometimes, and you get all freezing cold where you like try to breathe out of your nose and it's freezing. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that's like romanticizing the idea of something. Um. Sure, I can find you a link to the next beginner class. I don't know when it is. There's an intermediate speaking class right now and there's a beginner class. Oh wow, not for a while. Maybe I will do a beginner class today. Oh, we don't have very many beginner classes. There's one later tonight, I believe. Um, I'll find you a link after this class. Um, here's the next word, kerosene. Does everyone know what kerosene is? No. Does it's anyone a, know what kerosene is? A fuel substance. Can you say that again? Uh, it's like a fuel system for burning or... Right. Here's a definition, a light fuel, we use it in heaters. Um, you can also have uh, kerosene lamps that you use when you go camping, where you just light it and the kerosene keeps it burning for a long time. So it's a very light fuel. Um, does everyone know what charcoal is? Yeah. What's charcoal? No. thing that you use in barbecue or something like a black rock. Mm -hmm. And if you were in yesterday's class, it's um, like carbon. So it's a porous black solid. It's a form of carbon. Do you know what deforestation means or what it means for an area to be deforested? Yeah. For me, I want the forest area. Yeah. So to de anything, it means the opposite. So for an area to be forested, it means lots of trees, um, a large forest. For it to be deforested is to, for all of those trees to be cut down. So deforestation is the act of cutting down trees, usually for lumber. Um, <laughs> pretty negative for the environment, unfortunately. It happens all the time. Um, OK, here's another industrialized world. What does that mean, the industrialized world? It's or the world we live in right now, after the industrialization. Right. <laughs> Industrialization, that's a nice word um, to pronounce. Oops, I spelt it wrong. Industrialization. Sweatshops, factories, right. So it's the world that has become industrial, basically, right? Um, the um, act of becoming industrial. The industrialized world has lots of industry, right? Lots of different industries, lots of um, factories. Um, uh, subsidies. Subsidies is something Subs that the government. Uh, no, no. Okay. Subsidies mean that uh, a branch of uh, any entity or any company open uh, uh, another business with other name. Right. Giant. So it's a yeah. sum of money, an amount of money that is granted to a business yeah. or a company usually by the government yeah. usually by the government um, there we call it government subsidies or sometimes by another public body they will grant money to another business um, yeah yeah there is subsidy. what does it micro mean like this subsidiary micro is small I think item Wajid was talking about subsidiary I'm not sure yeah, Wajid, I think you were talking. Do you know what subsidiary subsidiary means? That's a hard one to pronounce. Subsidiary. I say subsidiary. Is that wrong? Subsidiary. Subsidiary. Okay. Yeah. Subsidiary. And if you look at how it's pronounced, subsid. Oh, I see why you said subsidiary. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, but it sounds a bit Subsidiary is pronounced. There's a definition for subsidies. So a sum of money granted by a government or public body to assist an industry or business um, yeah. 
Ignore the last part. To assist an industry or business. Um, let me find a definition for subsidiary. Subsidiary. <laughs> I just pressed this down. Um, Was that Google? I yeah. Subsidiary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find a good definition for um, furnishing aid or support. Uh, compensation from the government uh, to public. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next thing was micro. Micro finance, micro loan. The guy in the in the talk micro. uses micro a lot. Small amounts of things. Yeah. Small for a small business. Right. So it's not necessarily a small amount. It's Microeconomics, right? It's focused on a small area or a small place. So microfinance is the finance in one small area versus yeah. macro. So it's micro versus macro. And yeah, if you've taken any English university classes in economics, you know that there's microeconomics and macroeconomics. That's kind of yeah. one of the most. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever you add micro in front of something it means the same thing as when it's added to economics so you'll hear him say microfinance and micro loan um, yeah. chronic conditions do you know what something if something is chronic what does that mean yeah mine are that before death <laughs> but shape something oh like well that. yeah um, if some something is chronic it, it could you could have a chronic will, illness or a chronic lasting. pain Perkin? Everlasting or something like uh, last for a long time. Right, long lasting um, and recurring usually. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about, in this case, he's going to be talking about climate change as a chronic condition. Um, so you'll hear him talking about climate change ha because it's like an ever a long lasting, a recurring thing, it's continuous. Um, but you're right, whoever said before death, you hear of chronic illness a lot of the time, like cancer is usually a chronic illness where it kind of spreads and lasts for a long time. Um, okay. That's pretty much it for vocabulary, I think. You might hear some other words while you're listening and you can come back and talk about them. Um, any questions about that vocabulary? It's all good, all clear. Okay, so I have some focus questions I want you guys to think about before, while we're watching. So same as always with TED Talks. Um, what are the main points of the presentation? Can you summarize it? Um, how would you describe this talk? Persuasive, informative, courageous, ingenious, fascinating, inspiring, beautiful, funny, or another word. You use your own words. Those are just some options, different ways that you could describe it. Um, how do you feel about the presentation itself? What could be improved? So did they use enough media? Did they incorporate video? Um, are they entertaining? Are they funny? What did you like or dislike about the actual presentation? And what is your opinion on this topic? So try to just, as you're listening, listen for the main ideas, think about the presentation, and just try to understand what, what's going on. Um, and when we're finished watching, we will start to discuss it. Flummoxed? <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I've never seen that word before. Flummoxed. What? <laughs> Perplexed. Bewildered. That's a great word, flummoxed. Look, you Perkins teaching me. Why, why are you even here? <laughs> what is word. it? Flum flummoxed. Flummoxed. I said I've never even heard that word before, and it looked it yeah. up. It means to uh, perplex, bewilder someone. Actually, I think Leon is a great vocabulary. Yeah, that's a great word. That's an excellent word, flummoxed. Um, I haven't put the link yet. I'm just about to. So, again, just kind of think about those ideas. I will paste the video link. Perkins already got it in the chat. Um, I'm also putting it in the YouTube app. So, however you want to watch it. But please mute yourself. And if you're in the YouTube app, please do not touch it because then it will refresh for everybody. And that's a little bit annoying. So, if you're outside, we still have room in class. I see lots of you guys watching, so you can come on in and hang out with us if you want to. Um, we will be muted for about five minutes, so if it looks awkward, it's because we're watching the appeal. Okay, ready?
Ready. Yeah. Ready. Ready. Yeah.
Okay. Um, is everyone, everyone's good? Finished watching? Yeah. Yes. Um, did you want to watch it one more time? Or did do you think you understood pretty much the, the majority of what was being said? Yes. It's okay? And, okay, I have a question for us. Uh, sure. Uh, he's, he said that uh, we are using we are getting the charcoals from trees and after we lost the trees we couldn't get they couldn't get the charcoals but as far as I know we are not getting charcoal from the trees. No, we're not getting charcoal from trees. I didn't hear him say that that we're getting it from trees. Because yeah, I heard that great. too. I, I think they actually do that in or did that in Haiti in some places. They can um, um, turn it into like some sort of. Yeah. Maybe we can look from the script. Um, yeah. Hello. Yeah, it so, says. Some of the, uh, I, 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 I am a rival. No. This is a rival. Hi. No. We just watched Hi. a video, so the link is in the chat if yes. you want to watch it. Okay, um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's saying before. I would just Googled it and I got um, this article. It's like. It um, says that they. that Haitians are. Where did it go? Um, before long, 98% of the country's forests had been chopped down and Haitians were burning 30 million trees worth of charcoal annually. So Hazel's saying they burn the trees and transform it into charcoal. We did that in the past here in Sweden. Uh, yeah, like, so it's, it's not that they're like cutting into the trees and finding charcoal, it's that they're actually burning the trees down and then you like turning it into charcoal. You did that in Sweden too? Yeah, in the in the past. I've I've seen those kind of um, I don't know what it's called in English, but sure was it, it looks like this. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I have no idea, but <laughs> yeah, no idea. Okay. I can go to. Let we'll me try. Translate. I can uh, see if I can translate it. This is Swedish. The, it's uh, wood. It says charcoal was produced before the so-called charcoal stacks. You put large amounts of wood on the edge, and cover the whole thing with pine boughs, moss, soil, and coal fines. They lit. They light it, and then. It says, the fire smolders and it turns into a distillation which produces carbon. Hmm. Who knew? <laughs> so they have ways of burning the wood down to actually make carbon. So this that's kind of what he was talking about. Um, I guess it's more complicated than just burning it like in a fire. Um, dissemination? Distribution. You know the word technological you typed in dissemination. Do you guys know what dissemination means? Distribution. Not exactly. To disseminate ideas. You heard of that? Divulge. To, to spread. Spread yeah. ideas. Yeah. So I guess kind of to distribute. It's. Um, yeah, so to spread ideas, to open a subject up for debate. Um, okay, so what are the main points of the presentation? Just kind of summarize. What is he talking about? Can anyone I, kind of... Energy poverty. Right. He keeps saying energy poverty. So what is that? What is he, what's his point? That uh, energy is expensive <laughs> on Haiti <laughs> because they use ch charcoal and uh, that kerosene. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, they're talking about the expenses of, of energy, how and they're ineffective. burning. Ineffective. Yeah. yeah, they're burning a lot of fossil fuels, and he's saying that that's not very effective. What else does he say in the video? I think the main point is, like, is the lack of support of this type of more environmental products, so they cannot get more uh, popular, or they cannot. They are not so common. That's why. 
So the, the prices are higher. So people don't afford it. So we still we keep using this non-environmental product. So it hurts. It causes deforestation or or has problems because there are it causes uh, air pollution, deforestation, lots of things. Is the the way to to get energy? It's uh, expensive and ineffective. Yep, he specifically says that expensive and ineffective. Um, so, how? What about the presentation? Um, next question was, how would you describe this talk? Presentation. Oh, okay, sorry, I didn't see the the chat. He's concentrating on Haiti, I think, because he lives in Haiti. He was saying he lived in Haiti and kind of, I think, kind of connecting more specifically to Haiti because he has that connection. But he did, he did um, mention that there's lots of countries in the same position. He just didn't use them for examples, maybe because he doesn't know them as well, as much. Tahiti was devastated recently. <laughs> Not so remember. recently, perhaps. When was that? Er 2008. Earthquake. Okay, it was not recently, but it was all. It was still like kind of recent. <laughs> disaster. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what did you guys think about the presentation? How would you describe it? Do you think it was a good presentation? Could he have improved it? He quickly mm -hmm. told everything in uh, five minutes and didn't use any med media files, projectiles. But at least brought some uh, device that showed us how to use that work. And his examples were was good, very good. I personally think it was. We watched lots of TED talks in these classes. This was, the, I think, the TED talks. Videos. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, this was, I think, the worst. <laughs> oh, uh. Like presentation. Yeah, the presentation was successful, I think, because you know the the way he stands on the stage, the way he uh, talks. At the beginning, he couldn't say a sentence. He corrected it, so he wasn't so relaxed, I think. And I don't know. And he had he had flashcards. Do you guys know what flashcards are? Yeah, yeah. From you don't now. see people in TED presentations using flashcards very often. So he had notes that he was flipping through as he was presenting. Yeah. <laughs> he had <laughs> something. Yeah. He had something in his hand, but he never showed what's this. No talk about by showing, pointing out that this is this device. Or show pictures, explain how it works. What is this? Why do you hold this in your hand? Just you hold it in your hand and you talk about something else. He know. held it up at one point. What did he say it was? It was a solar. I typed it down. Something. Solar LED. Something. Solar LED light or something. Solar LED. Yeah, they're solar LED light bulbs. What is a solar light bulb? What does that mean if something is solar powered? We use the sun as a power source. Right. So it's it's powered by the sun. Um, the energy comes from the sun. So that was kind of a more natural source of energy. So he explained it very briefly. Um, and he was saying that that could contribute to kind of improving this energy poverty. Rather than people burning fossil fuels all the time for light, they could use things like this. Um, but they're expensive. So how is a poor country going to afford things like all these solar LED light bulbs? I knew Philips uh, uh, invented one uh, like bulb. It consumes half, like, 10 watts an hour. But the price like sixty dollars. You can buy 18 watts. It's maybe like three or four dollars. <laughs> so why do you pay fifty, uh, sixty dollars just for eight eight watts? Yeah. Actually, actually, most people don't think. Uh, in a long term, they just look the price and uh, buying that that for the price. And if most of the people in Haiti don't buy them because that's reason. But uh, if you buy normal light bulb 
probably it will consume more energy than a normal lead and it will its lifespan will be will less than a norm a, a professional lead one so actually it's um, bad in economical perspective yeah so maybe you you could kind of argue that it doesn't exactly have work, have the effects that it's hoping to have but in that in that moment if you don't have the money you can buy that okay Anyone have anything to add so far? So basically, do we agree that maybe it, I think that the topic is really interesting, but that the presentation of it maybe wasn't great. <laughs> do you know what the word monotone means? Yeah. Do you think he? Oh my goodness, I can't type. Monotone. <laughs> do you think that he was a little bit monotone? Definitely. <laughs> He was kind of talking like this and looking at his card a lot and walking around and he didn't really smile and it was really boring. Because he is in in um USA. Pardon? Madan is in USA. In the United States. In the United States, yeah. Um I think he he actually said he lives in Haiti. Um but he was American. He's American. Yes. But if I talked like that all the time in class, would you guys even join my class? <laughs> Probably not. If we just sit here and talk like with a straight face, like I can't even do it because I smile too much. But if I had like a straight face and monotone voice for an hour, I mean, you wouldn't join. It would be really boring. Right? No, so, I would join, but probably I would fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, you'd just be sleeping. So there would be a lot of snoring coming from the audience. <laughs> uh, we hear this information every day, so he could be more persuasive. Yeah. So it, he, it. Okay. So persuasive. Do you think he was trying to persuade us? Uh, of something? No. No. no it, was it was more informative. Yeah. More informative. He does keep saying that we need to solve this energy poverty. Um, do you think that he puts forth much of a solution for us to solve it? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. I don't think just a one. Yeah, he had those light light bulbs. I, I thought that he suggested a solution. Mm -hmm. Or at uh, least start, right? Or he compared with like Western countries. Where yeah. the government uh, gives subsidies for this kind of investments, green right. energy. So mm -hmm. he was looking for something similar in Haiti or some sort of. Right. And mm -hmm. then the main concern is actually being able to pay for these things. Um, mm. And that was where he said USA had to transfer money. So, yeah, this is where he was talking about subsidies and money coming in from other governments. What did you think about that? I don't think it's a problem of the United States. Probably they won't care the Haiti. They can, yeah, of course charities will help the Haiti, but not in that purpose, I think, because he was trying to find a solution and he, end of the, end of the presentation, he said that uh, one of my friends said invention is easy, hard one is technology dissemination of this technology and he was right but the solution was not good enough mm -hmm. to solve this problem. Anyone else have anything to add so far? Well okay. I think his idea was good that he there is a need to lower the upfront cost so, so yeah for, for, for the poor people in Haiti. Right and so Firkin, you're kind of saying that you, you don't see why the USA would want to contribute money specifically for that, but what he's saying is that this usage of fossil fuels in Haiti, it's an international problem because you, no matter where in the world you're burning the fossil fuels, they're, they're still being burned and it's all kind of contributing to this international problem of us consuming too much. And do you, right? think, do you think the United States will care highly than, more than their countries because there are many other problems in their country in the United States and there are many other countries other than Haiti? Mm -hmm. So you think the U.S. is more likely to invest in more energy efficient solutions for the U.S. 
rather than yeah, for other countries. Logically, um, makes sense, right? Okay. Um. So I had a dis. We kind of already talked about it, but here is my discussion question: What does the term energy poverty mean exactly? We know now he proposed those LED light bulbs. What do you propose? <laughs> so not necessarily your own ideas, but if you have ideas, great. But what other ways are there to for things to become more energy efficient? There's lots of different things out there, te new technology. Um, for example, Maria was talking about carpooling. There's one. So what are some other ways that we can reduce our carbon footprint and make things more efficient? Mm. First of all, we don't need lots of technology. We start uh, consuming. Uh, we don't need to light the lamp. We we can turn it off by doing this. Uh, we, if we uh, if we don't need to take a ride, uh, walk, walk or. <laughs> Just don't take a ride. Take uh, take oh, uh, take a ride with four or five people. Don't take a ride, or don't use uh, cars with very big engines. Mm -hmm. People use cars with five liters of engine. It consumes ten times more. So use a little car. Share your car with your at least your friends. Mm -hmm. oh. After you finish this, it will probably it will decrease fifty percent. So then you can think about the technologies. How so can we improve of, our technologies? Yeah, it's like the problem is we're using too much technology, right? We need to just stop using so much technology. Yeah, if you don't need, don't use it that much. Don't <laughs> waste it. Actually, not exact technology. Maybe uh, you can use solar energy, wind energy, and it will be more efficient than your your older energy, older technologies. But there's a problem. The more you the more you become, uh, how can I say, uh, green saver, the more money you have to pay. And unfortunately, in the world, we are not using the best system. We are still uh, focused on the coal consumption, charcoal coal, because it's easy to uh, use that and it gives a lot of energy. And you ha you don't have to pay or invest a lot of money other than the other solutions like wind power or other thing. And for an individual, maybe there was something that, like about covering the house to reduce the heating. What what do they call that? Insulation? Yeah, insulation. I agree with solar energy because the earth is more and more heat every day, so we could use the that heat. Yeah, so the use of heat, light, all of these yes. things. Um, and you've kind of made a good point. There's the other technologies out there like solar and wind energy, but it's it's really expensive. Um, like if you have a farm, the, the cost of like a windmill, you know those big windmills that you see, the big wind energy windmills? Yeah. The cost of one of those is pretty high. <laughs> so, one million dollars. Like, for example, um, at my dad's house, he has a pool, and it's heated. And the cost of solar panels to have it solar heated is actually mm -hmm. more expensive than, um, than well, heating maybe a, uh Maybe a short time, but uh, what about a uh, long time? Yeah. So in the long term, you think the prices of these these new technologies will go down? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the same as any technology you could say, right? Because like computers, when they first came out, they were outrageously expensive, and now you can get um, one for a decent price. Uh, excuse me. In me uh, next time I buy Apple because it is not expensive. Not Apple? Amago. Yes, it is not expensive now. It's expensive. <laughs> no, it, it is not expensive. It's small. It's small. For an it's Apple, fine. like a Mac, for an Apple computer. Uh, Apple computer of uh, bureau, because Windows, it was a big problem. You have a very, 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 very in uh, in uh, in, uh, in France, 
no apple is no expensive small uh, it is no big apple small apple hmm. next I time I, I buy uh, apple because uh, no no there is I don't know I bought my Mac in France and it was pretty expensive <laughs> um, but I guess it depends on what you're buying if um, what look, product you're buying? Look, in the blue touch. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're using the Verbling chat. So if you guys are in the, yeah, if you buy a Mac Air or a Pro and the Retina screen and all that other stuff. Um, if we're in the Verbling chat, not the blue chat. So over at the left where it says Verbling classes, that's the cl chat that we're all in. Um, mm -hmm. Maria, yeah, solar cells. On the roof, so we call it um, solar paneling or a solar panel. I don't know. The uh, problem, my problem is I don't know how to do to come on to Verbin Touch when you're on Blue Touch. I don't know. That, that. Yeah, I know. It's okay. You can stay um, 700 euros. Yeah. You, I know you. your Verbling chat isn't working. That's okay. I see you understand? Because long time ago, it's very, very expensive for me. Yeah, so the prices have gone down. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's better because Windows are finished. Mm -hmm. um, another, what's another, so we've talked about solar panels, wind energy. Um, what are some other alternative solutions to kind of lower our carbon footprint or reduce energy poverty? I Oh, yeah. Like Maria said, hydro energy from the water, geothermal. Yep. Yeah. Um, on campus at the university I went to, we had a big water turbine. So it was like spinning around basically and spinning the water and it was it would go really, really fast, create energy, and they used that energy from the water all over campus. So there was it was kind of a water water powered hydro powered um, university campus so that was a pretty cool thing so you can yeah you can get energy from water uh, this what is one that is Yellowstone hot water what's that uh, I don't know exactly what they call in English but you know there was a something holes the hot water coming from the deep and it pumps out and it has a special diff are you talking? Sorry. Um, the hot water springs? Yeah. Yeah. We call them springs. Methane from garbage. Compost. Yep. Nuclear. <laughs> yeah. Nuclear is uh, Sorry, Jean-Marc? Bah, nuclear is uh, very dangerous. Uh, no, no, Mokushima. In Japan, in uh, two years ago. Yeah, That's yeah. A big problem. Sorry. He's, he said that uh, we shouldn't use the uh, nuclear power energy because he was talking about the Hiroshima of Japan, uh, that what kind of vast activities done by the America over there. So we shouldn't uh, try to uh, produce nuclear power. So it, it goes uh, a wrong side. So that's why he's talking about the nuclear. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't uh, uh, depend upon nuclear power. We should try to go on other sides, like hydropower, like solar system, like uh, uh, some other energy power producing. So uh, we should avoid the nuclear power. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you guys agree yeah. with that? Jim, I was talking about that. Yeah. Do you agree with that, with what, um, what they're yeah. saying? About yeah, it's a cool idea because uh, uh, because of that we uh, go a lot of, uh, in this world we have a lot of uh, energy sources resources okay like gases uh, there is a lot of uh, 
resources uh, uh, in this world. So we should uh, avoid the nuclear power, okay? Because some countries try to uh, use in a wrong way uh, to uh, to destroy some uh, uh, people, to destroy their enemies. So mm -hmm. they use the nuclear power. So we should we should try to avoid that uh, power generation. Okay, we should depend upon the hydropower. We should try to solar system. We should try to uh, explore gases. So it's uh, I think it's better. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree yeah. with you. Do you guys agree yeah. with Wajid that we should be trying to stay away from nuclear power and using other types of? Yes. Power? Yeah, I think we should close down nuclear power. Plants. Maria, good point. Like the storage of nuclear waste, it's it's very difficult. Nuclear power plants are really bad for um for the environment. And yeah, there's a difference between nuclear bombs and nuclear yeah. power. Of course there's a difference, but yeah. but nuclear power it's just it's not it's not economic or sorry, not economic, um, environmentally friendly. Um, yeah. all the waste and there's there's other ways that we can get power. Like we just listed the big ones, right? Water water, um, wind and solar. There's so much energy from those sources. It's just a matter of being able to get the energy. <laughs> So, like through solar panels and the wind turbines and everything, those are the things that can be a little bit expensive. But mm. I don't think it's it's kind of expensive. It's all about how you. It's about are you doing? Uh, are you investing on these technologies or not? If you if yeah. governments provoke the usage of these things, it's pretty easy. For example, these windmills. It's very easy to make it. Make it. Yeah. Even I can make one of them. <laughs> but just, yeah, it's not hard. It's, it's yeah. difficult. Uh, it's, no, it's pretty true. easy. It's, it's, it's a very a, basic it's, idea. What it's he's a very talking basic about idea. specifically is Haiti and some of the poor countries. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how, how would some of the poorer countries be able to afford that type of technology? I don't think it's they're cheap or easy to build. If it is. Probably many countries will do that, but it is not. It costs a lot of money, and also there's another thing that, for for example, like the oil companies like Exxon, BP, or other types of countries, uh, using some advertisement techniques like we will increase the employment rates. Uh, they are trying to find new oil sources on the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how they call the oil and the water, but. In the other places, offshore, yeah, offshore. offshore oil. Offshore it's very oil. dangerous to take out oil offshore. Yeah. It's dangerous and risky. Mm -hmm. But they earn a lot of money. Yeah, it's the point. Um, okay, we're just about out of time. I'm just gonna give you guys my links again, so you can follow me on Verbling to keep up with when I'm teaching. Um, check out my Facebook page. You can post questions, comments, whatever there. Um, sorry again to cut it off. I hate doing that when we're having a good discussion. Uh, I, I um, so next class, uh, yes. starting in one minute, we're talking about Shakespeare. So yes, Shakespeare, you can yes. Okay. Um, so thanks. Nice to see you guys, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.